Hey, hey, another week has come and gone. Hope everyone had an amazing weekend. Spring's finally here. Welcome to episode 40 of Outside the Shoot. I'm your host, Randy Frame. Due to recording this uh, intro a couple days earlier, there's going to be a one-week break from the OTC Player of the Week. Uh, That being said, if you or anyone you know had a fantastic week on the diamond, let us know at Twitter. That's at Outside the Shoot. That way, they could end up being a Player of the Week and get their shout-out on a future episode. So, uh, yeah, let us know. Now, on to this week's guest, and we sat down and chatted with former King in this Court member and current manager of national teams and Canadian championships for Softball Canada, Mike Brancho. Mike has had quite a career in the game, as he was able to travel all over North America with the late great Eddie Fainer and the King in this Court and play in front of thousands of fans on a nightly basis. Mike would also be named to an ISC All-World team in 1999 while playing with the Amsterdam Spirit from New York before going on to his current position with Softball Canada. We're going to talk to Mike in this interview about getting a start in the game in Cornwall, winning a silver medal at the Intermediate Eastern Canadians in 1993, joining the King in this court and the amazing stories from his time there, as well as a great story about having dinner with the legend Gordy Howe and much more. Mike was an absolute treat to talk to, and I'm sure we could have chatted for hours on end with the amount of stories he had to share with us. So as usual, grab that drink, sit back, relax, because here we go. I've got the world in my palm, like camera action and song. I can't describe what I'm feeling, ain't never felt this freedom. I've got the world in my palm, like camera action and song. Oh, there we go. I was waiting for it this time. What, what are we talking about? I don't know. What are you going to talk about? <laughs> it's beautiful out today. Oh, unreal. So what was the temperature today? 15 is the, 15 what it said city. in the vehicle. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful day. Yeah. Getting on to ball season mm. and minus four tomorrow. Makes you start craving. Yeah, I know. Wind, <laughs> yeah. wind chill probably minus 20. Yeah. Yeah. It's Influence. great though. Great yeah. weather. Oh, freaking right. Clearing up though. The land. Yes. Now, but that's the thing. Like getting us like little teas today or just like, oh, come on. Ball season. Oh, I got some good news for you, and I forgot to even tell you. You mofo. Sorry. But uh, so our ball field in Lance, we got the go-ahead for new lights and new fence. What? Yeah. Municipal and provincial government. Cody Boyce called me, our MP. God love you, Cody Boyce. King's hands. Yes. We got the uh, go-ahead for lights and fence. So brand new lights and new fence. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's really great news for the spring. Man. Yeah. Had to hold on to that right till now. Well, I want to save it for the I'm podcast. all happy. <laughs> <laughs> new, yeah. new lights there will be awesome. Yeah, you'll be able to see right field. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Remember that game we played last year and that Henniger kid was in right field and the, <laughs> it was foggy out and there's no lights out there? And he caught it? And the, the ball was like 300 feet in the air. <laughs> yeah. And we're looking out. We couldn't even see him. And then he comes running in with the ball in his glove. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, here's an inside the park home run. Yeah. Henny, where are you? (laughs) Old ginger. That was crazy. (laughs) Henny, I know you're listening. Great catch, buddy. It was a great catch. Oh, freak. Yeah. So what's going on anyway? Uh, well, we, news on the, uh, nationals there. We, uh, yeah. St. John's is out as the host. Uh, yeah. Very understandable. Yeah. I mean, what can you do? It was more than expected to be honest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, chatting with the guys, over time, we, we figured it as much it was going to be canceled. Mm-hmm. It's very unfortunate two years in a row that it is. There is talk that there's possibly going to be a tournament, though, this summer mm-hmm. uh, in another venue. And we can actually talk to our guest today about that. Yeah, I'm sure he knows he's a little the bit. Manager of the Canadian Nationals or yeah. National Championship, sorry. Yeah. Mike Branchel. Yeah. Bonjour. So, yeah, we'll find out more. Yeah, right it's on too that. bad. Um, we've been going hard, though. You, yeah. you and I with our uh, the senior team at the Dome every Sunday and then a uh, group of 24 kids after that mm-hmm. for uh, for an hour. It's been going really well. That's good. Kids are excited. Yeah. The, uh, like the, the younger group there, how are they, like, I haven't, I haven't got to stick around with them, but the, how, how are they taking to it? Really good. Like, they're very receptive. A lot of them are brand new to the sport. Yeah. Um, some of them are baseball players that I'm trying to bring over to the dark side. <laughs> um, but they're gaining, uh, y- you know, a lot from it for sure. Yeah. It- it's amazing though. Some of those kids, 
and not to knock anybody else or any other coaches, but some of those kids, even their batting stance or how to approach the plate or any of that stuff is all brand new to them right. as what we're teaching. Yep. So it's been great for us because mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of a refresher for us and it's also getting those kids interested in, in playing softball. Exactly. Fast pitch, exactly. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Freaking right. No, we love it for sure. That's awesome. And I get, you know, it's nice having help from some of the senior guys mm-hmm. and, uh, and Woody, of course. Yep. Absolutely. Coach extraordinaire. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's a beauty. On to our guest. Uh, we touched on it there, Mike, Mike Brancho. Uh, yeah. I got a lot of questions for him, man. I guess you do. <laughs> like yeah. the whole king in his court. Like, yeah, that's, you know, that's just epic. The, you know, like everybody knows about King in the score. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that Mike got to, got to play there for a number of years yeah. and probably has some fantastic stories and, yeah. and I'm going to ask him a lot of questions because. Do you have the answer to how many players have actually played on King in court? I went on their website and. Like we I, know Andy I did. <laughs> <laughs> of course I did. Yeah. Uh, I think it's around you know, between 16 and 20 around there. Jeez, I think and that's there. not a lot for that many of uh, yeah, years well, that they played. 1940. Jesus. 1940 God. is when it started. Is that right? Yeah. Like that's unreal. Like, yeah. and I like I mean, reading stuff. They played in a lot of prisons and stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, so there were 16, but then there were only 12 when they were done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I watched a lot of videos this week, yeah. like leading up to this. And yeah. I mean, some of the videos, like they were like, they were playing in major league stadiums yeah. that were half full. Yeah. That's nuts. So, I mean, they were rock stars, man. Yeah. I can't wait to talk, to, ask Mike, you know, if, you know, if Eddie ever talked about that or, yeah. or anything like that. Cause yeah. I imagine he has some pretty good stories about oh, it. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. anyway, we'll, uh, Mike, be prepared. We have some questions about Canadian senior nationals. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. If we can ask them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. If we can ask them. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, let's get to Mike. Okay. Sounds good, man. All right, here we go. Mike, thanks for coming on the podcast, buddy. Hey, thanks a lot, guys, for having me. Should be fun. Yes, sir. Absolutely. How's uh, How are you, Nancy, and the kids making out? Good. I mean, uh, as good as can be, that's for sure. It's been a, <clears throat> it's been a long year, um, you know, but uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, as they say. So, uh, you know, I know the boys are missing missing sports there's a little bit of hockey going on here but it's not uh not close to the same there's no contact in junior and uh you know so my oldest is uh you know he's actually uh heading out to play tonight and then the other one was on the ice last night we're just playing some inner squad games and stuff like that so but it's good <clears throat> it's good how's the how's the no contact making it <laughs> like, um, it's like our gentlemen's league. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's uh, well the the hard part too for for these guys. Uh, you know, at the junior level, yeah. you're only playing the one team. So, like before Christmas, they played the same team ten times. Holy Jesus! Oh my God. <laughs> How do you have yeah. no contact in that situation? Because <laughs> yeah. you're hating guys. Well, exactly. It's it's almost like playing two playoff series. So, um, yeah, things get a little uh, out of hand a couple of times, uh, especially like you know at the end of games and stuff. And yeah. uh, my my son's team they ended up winning I think eight eight games to two. So wow. uh, yeah, there was some definitely some. Uh, some bad blood brewing there. And one of our kids on, on, on his team, he actually had like a uh, hundred and some pelly minutes in, in the like six games. He played. So <laughs> it's shit. like, how do you do that? <laughs> oh, so, That's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, sure. Are you guys allowed to watch those games? Like, are they allowed to have it's, fans? It's, yeah. Well, it's uh, it depends what color coded we're in here in Ontario. Oh. Right now we're in orange. Yeah. So unfortunately, it's no for the junior ranks and stuff. But I mean, they got this thing called Hockey TV, so you pay for, you know, the monthly pers- uh, subscription, and okay. then you can you can watch. But uh, my younger, he's um, basically U sixteen, so he's first year the old midget system, yeah. and uh, you're allowed one parent in per um, per kid. Right. 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 So, so who gets that? Yeah. yeah. You or Nancy? <laughs> well, I, I'm actually on. I'm on, actually on the bench there. So, oh, there you uh, yeah, no we're shit. Both in. Involved with everything. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, so it's it's both good and bad. Uh, yeah. You know, we're getting tired of playing the same team. Uh, so we're actually we we passed on playing them this month, and we're just doing uh, inter squad. So right, yeah. 
yeah, but at least they're getting them off the couch and off their games and yeah, you know. So we're yeah, it, it was shut down. There was nothing here at all for you know from just after Christmas till uh, till early February there. So it's good to get back. That's good. So is COVID uh, the situation with COVID? Is it getting better now? I know you're in Ottawa, yeah. but is it getting better yeah. in Ontario in general? Or yeah, it's a lot better than what it was in. Um, you know, the peak time there just after Christmas and uh, in, into January. I mean, our numbers are still still high. Like, I think uh, approximately a 1,000 or so today, again, in Ontario. Oh, jeez. A, a majority of those are in Toronto, right? So it's uh, it's it's tough there. I mean, obviously, people are, are so close together, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's hard there. Yeah. It's, it's spread. Here, here in Ottawa, I think we were... Over the course of the last seven days, they give you a seven day average. I think we're around fifty or so a day. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's not horrible. We're we're right around the uh, mid orange to higher orange in certain yeah. categories. But um, you know, it, hey, it's uh, what do you do, right? No, one hundred percent. Yeah. Keep moving forward and uh, do whatever you can. And um, yeah, I mean. There's been a couple of outbreaks in kids' sports and things, yeah. but uh, we don't know where that comes from either. So, no. yeah, so, we, we uh, go yeah. into an absolute panic when we get more than three here in Nova Scotia. <laughs> like we had one today. <laughs> We're down to 17 active cases, I think it yeah. is, something yeah. like that. So, it's definitely getting better here, but uh, yeah. Anyway, Mike, listen, we're going to yeah. get right into some stuff here. Uh, Randy and I were talking, and we wanted to get your, um, I guess, what is your position with Softball Canada? I know that you're manager of national championships and the national teams. Can you just touch on that a little bit for us? Yeah, so I started with Softball Canada back in, I think it was 07, and I came in with uh, manager of uh, Canadian championships, and I think at the time it was called Domestic Services. So I was kind of looking after the learn to play program and uh, slow pitch and a few of the, few of the other things, uh, you know, that are secondary to, I don't want to call them secondary, but um, they're almost like, you know, like uh, not a major part of, uh, of, a, of the program in right. the sense that they're assigned one, you know, person specific to that, uh, that structure of, of the programming. So anyway, so uh, eventually uh, Harvey Stevenson was, uh, was with the men's team and the women's team. Um, you know, and he was taking managing uh, both of those programs. <clears throat> and uh, Harvey retired, I think it was uh, in, um, ooh, must have been about 2013, I think it was. And at that point in time, we did some reshuffling and we wanted to keep the, uh, the manager uh, of the national team program um, within the office. Right. So, uh, so I had the two hats on there uh, of, on the national team side. I was taking care of both the men's and the women's program. Oh. Um, but that was right about whenever the WBSC went into their uh, two-year cycle for world world championships. Right. All right. Yeah. So it it got a little crazy for me in the sense of taking care of four teams with, you know, the junior women's, junior men's, the men's and the women's, yeah. and uh, our border battle teams. And anyway, so at that after that year, we kind of um, separated it, and um, um, we hired a person for the women's side and I stayed on with the men's um with the men's program and mm -hmm. since then I've been as you said the uh, Canadian championships and the men's uh, national teams are under my portfolio nice, so I wanted, nice. yeah that I, I wanted to ask you about that 2015 year I mean both for the men and women that like that was quite a year what <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I, I don't think it's ever uh, I mean in Canada anyways it was never happened before so it was really it was really cool to be part of that I mean, um, like, you know, my first ever event was back in, in Columbia in, um, I think it was 13, whenever, um, we went and we won gold, right. um, you know, whenever, whenever Skelly hit the bomb, yeah. uh, off of, uh, off of Eric there from Venezuela. And, uh, you know, we were playing with, uh, with a must ball and he absolutely crushed it. So it was, uh, ever since then it's, it's like, how am I going to top this trip? But, uh, yeah. in 2015. 2015, we definitely did with, uh, you know, both the Pan Am Games and, and the World uh, Gold Medals. So it was uh, it was nice on that side, and obviously with the women following up uh, after our week in, in Toronto and, and winning gold and beating uh, the U.S. Uh, a very tough and a very good U.S. team as well. So 
yeah, it was quite the year for Softball Canada, which just happened to be our 50th anniversary as well. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Amazing. So that's, it, uh, that's pretty cool when that, when that, when it can fall in those dates. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty special. Yes. Somebody, yep. somebody had a pretty good game in that uh, world championship. I was just going to mention to you that we're not talking about Malali <laughs> on this fucking podcast. <laughs> fucking every time we talk know, on this podcast I about I've Malali. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah, yeah, I posted a video like a week ago. I, know. Yeah. Yeah. I like the guy, but holy fuck, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely, uh, definitely something that, uh, anybody that was part of that or there yeah. or, you know, that loves the game is definitely, uh, uh, you know, a fan of that 2015 comeback. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah. Well, it made us all feel like we were part of that team that time. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. And I mean, I, I can't say enough about the host either with, uh, you know, Saskatoon putting on a great show and they treated our team and, uh, you know, the fans, just everything was so perfect for us to, to win our hotel. Like, you know, we had special room put aside so we can go over video and uh you know uh we just uh, we were just so comfortable we had our own practice diamond we had a dressing room uh you know at our practice diamond uh we had food catered in uh, you uh, name it it was just a perfect perfect scenario yeah um for us and i and, and i know hilly uh jason hill also mentioned uh a little bit about it back on his this uh, podcast before Christmas about getting sick and there was about yeah. five or six of us that were before the, uh, you know, before the, the event started, we went down to the, you know, and we played Japan in an exhibition game and sure enough, they had an outdoor barbecue. And <laughs> I was one of those guys that just didn't, uh, it didn't sit well. And unfortunately I ended up missing the first game against New Zealand, which is also happened to be the day that we took the team pictures. Oh, so here shit. we are. Oh. <laughs> We're gold medalist, and uh, you know the. Yeah, I'm sure, Mike. Yeah, you were really there, right? Well, where are you in this picture? No, we yeah, really. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. but uh, no, we made up for it on the field. We had some great pitches on the field yeah. after. So, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, it was it was great to be part of that. That's, that's for sure. Wicked. Right on. Uh, I don't know how much we can divulge into this year uh, or what uh, what's going on. Uh, and we can edit it out if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's uh, yeah. Newfoundland losing or, you know, bowing down as far as being the host? Uh, and again, which is understandable. Yeah, but, absolutely. What's yeah. Uh, what's the go ahead right now? Um, well, I mean, it, it's something that, um, you know, nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm definitely planning on moving forward, like uh, softball Canada, our Canadian championship committee, our board, everybody is all in right now to, uh, you know, to have uh, Canadian championships and we're planning, um, you know, I don't want to say a normal, a normal schedule, but we're planning for all the events to, uh, to take place right now, whether that happens or not, obviously it's going to be uh, time and, and uh, you know, health and safety and everything has to fall into place for that uh, yeah. to happen. Um, you know what, if, if not, then we're looking at some alternative plans could be anything from like, uh, uh, smaller regional events, especially like, you know, like obviously Atlanta, Canada, um, anybody that goes in or leaves and comes back has that 14 day, uh, self isolation happening right now. So, you know what, maybe we can do something for Atlanta, Canada, um, and then, you know, east west, or west central type of thing. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but we're definitely, uh, you know, we're not closing the doors. We're looking at some options. And, and uh, I, I think not only the adults, but the, but the kids have to play. That's for sure. Yeah, big Absolutely. Thing for us. Absolutely. And, and we don't want to lose, uh, you know, lose that 13, 14 year old that, uh, you know, is just starting to, to develop and just starting to have a great time. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, you, he doesn't play for two years. What's mm-hmm. he going to do? You know, so that's our concern. And uh, we just want to make sure that we have options there. And on a you know more selfish note, our, our national team needs to play. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like Argentina is, is playing, they're practicing, uh, they're together. Obviously, New Zealand is, you know, their national championships are happening right now. Right. Um, so, uh, USA, I mean, anything goes, uh, yeah. you know, there, they can, <laughs> in Florida, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're full out Texas. Yep. I mean, they're opening their, their stadium for MLB. Yeah. So, the Ra- uh, Rangers and Jays uh, can have full capacity. 
ask you for free signs. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so our guys need to need to play and get ready for, you know, the potential qualifier at the uh in November in in Argentina. So um, you know, selfishly we gotta look and, and try and make sure that happens. Yeah. We had a camp uh scheduled for our national team in April, uh in Saskatoon indoors and unfortunately we just uh you know, we had to pull the plug on that. So um who knows? Um, yeah. you know, like, uh, but, uh, Canadian championships were, uh, we're committed and our board is committed. Our Canadian championship committee, as I mentioned, uh, I've reached out to some of the provinces and, and the teams in certain age categories and, and, you know, everybody wants to, everyone's, everybody wants to get it done. So I think with enough, you know, people, uh, with the same goal in mind, we can, we can make it work. Yep. Fingers crossed. Yep. We're all hoping. For Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yep. For sure. We need everybody to get vaccinated. Yeah. Hopefully <laughs> Pretty much. Place. Yeah. Anyway, Mike, yep. uh, on to. All right. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you needed, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you just want to know about national. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Not true. We have some to, prison questions. Yeah. On, you. <laughs> on to your career. Uh, tell us about yep. getting your uh, start in the game in Cornwall. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, there's a lot of other guys uh, that uh, guys and gals that have been on here. My dad was a, uh, you know, an instrumental in me um, uh, getting my start in the game. Uh, you know, ever since I was a little guy, and you know, I had the, the team jersey and uh, Bat Boy whenever I could be, and shagging balls, and you know, doing all all that we can. And I think I was about eight years old, and um, there's a whole group of. Uh, you know, dads that were involved in hockey and, and stuff. And then next thing you know, they said, okay, well, let's, let's start a, a little minor softball association here. So uh, we had some really good athletes and uh, you know, so I think we were, like I said, about eight years old, we came together in the summer and we got some registrations. I think we had enough for maybe three teams or something like that. And <laughs> we kind of threw everybody on the diamond and uh, kind of broke them down from there. And I remember, uh, like, you know, uh, okay, all the pitchers go over here. So anyway, so I kind of moseyed over over there and there's probably about six or seven of us. And, you know, the first three guys just throw the, the old bowling ball style, just straight in like that. And I'm thinking, that's not how you pitch softball. I didn't like, you know, <laughs> my dad's games and yeah. what's going on. So I, so anyways, it came my turn. I, I threw a, a windmill and it was, uh, you know, much harder than the other guys that were there. And it's like, Hey, what's going on here? So, you know, ever since then, I was kind of a, a pitcher and we, um, you know, we had some really good teams uh, in the local area. Cornwall's about an hour from Montreal and then about an hour from Ottawa. And, you know, there's a bunch of little towns in between and every one of those little towns seemed to have, you know, somewhat of a men's team or, or a combined, um, you know, minor association. So we, we played locally until I think I was uh, 13 or 14 and I was still going to all my dad's games. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, one day I show up and there's only eight of them. Yeah. So somebody has bright idea of, you know, throwing Mike in right field. <laughs> so here Mike was in right field at, you know, 13 years old and, and uh, batting ninth, of course. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that was my start in, in men's. And uh, I have a question, just I, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but why is it always we throw them in right field? <laughs> I know. You honestly think about it. I have a friend that says, yeah, I played right field and they always DP'd for me. Yeah, so you're the worst kid on the team. <laughs> hey, good point though. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Continue, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn but, right um, anyways, yeah. So then we, uh, you know, we started with the, uh, I think it was in Pee Wee. We had a team that kind of went to the, the rural Ontario type of route, not the OASA. And, you know, we had some eliminations and stuff and we always did okay. We never won or, you know, finished first or anything like that. But we, uh, we more than held our own. And, and then, uh, I think I was 16 and I started pitching in the intermediate side in, in Cornwall. There's three leagues. And of course, uh, you know, you're, you're playing in all three whenever you're a pitcher. Yeah. So, um, so I got my, my feet wet there when I was about 16. And then I think I was 18 whenever I moved up to our, which was called the Cornwall Sportsman's League. And it was more or less the senior guys. Uh, some of them played, you know, in Ottawa. And it was it was pretty good, uh, pretty good a step up from the, the three intermediate leagues that I was playing in. So I had some success there. It was fun. I uh, went to school in Ottawa and uh, at the University of Ottawa. 
and, you know, hooked up with some teams here in the Ottawa area on the uh, intermediate side and then eventually hooked up with a team called uh, Ottawa Turpe Pontiacs. Okay. Um, You know, played some, played some there, but before that, actually, I I should say I I did play for Stittsville 56ers, uh, their junior program. Okay. Yeah. um, Back in the day. Yeah. And back then junior was, I think under 19. So uh, we had a pretty good uh, run at uh, Ontario's, uh, you know, uh, there was, I think, almost 30 teams in the Ontario uh, yeah. to qualify to go to the Canadian. So, That's crazy. you know, it was, yeah, it was always tough to get out of Ontario. And then, you know, so. Uh, so back, our, back my, sorry, any, Mike, sorry, Mike, yeah, back, like yeah. back when you were with Stittsville there, would, would there be anybody that, you know, that you would have played against that would went on to, to you know, like higher levels that uh, that we might know about? Uh, yeah, like uh, the Napanese were always the the top teams. Uh, you know, like the the Mike Finns, uh, Billy Langridge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they were our nemesis. We we just never turned the table on those guys at all. We couldn't beat them. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we never really got. Uh, we got on a roll one year, and we were I think in the final four, and uh, we were playing a late night game. And I think it was right in Napanee. And uh, anyways, we uh, the winner got to play Napanee the next day. And that was your birth to the Canadians because they were guaranteed three spots. Wow. And I remember we were up two runs or something and it just poured rain. And um, our team never did well in the morning. So the next thing you know, they're, they're scheduling us at like 7 a.m. to finish this game. And <laughs> and uh, we had a couple of older guys that, at that even at that point, like to, you know, have a have a few cold ones every once in a while. And <laughs> we just didn't, didn't show up the next day and we lost two straight and they were all double limbs back then. Wow. So we, uh, yeah. So that was my taste in junior. And, uh, like I said, I got to play some senior and I was still going back home. Which, like I said earlier, it's an hour drive. So I was, uh, you know, I was going back home to play in the Cornwall league as well. And, um, you know, I think that was my exposure whenever, uh, um, the king and his court were were coming into uh, into the northern part of New York. We had some guys from uh, just across the the river in in, uh, in New York State, from Messina, who were playing in our league, and um, so that's how I got my introduction to Eddie Fainer mm-hmm. uh, with, with them. Yeah, um, but I wouldn't uh, <laughs> on a podcast here. I, I do have to mention I was kind of spoiled back in university. I, I started with uh, Labatt back in the day as a campus rep. So my second <laughs> year of university, I. You know, and there's a great, a great story there. Um, you know, they hired me in late August and uh, said, you got to be at your house on uh, on Monday um, of Labor Day. <laughs> I said, OK. They said, we're, we're sending you we're sending you a shipment. <laughs> I said, OK. And, and they said, have some guys there with you. And I all right, no problem. So anyway, so we're waiting, waiting. And there's, you know, four of us. And all of a sudden, this great big transport pulled up and there was two skids of cans of beer on it double blue <laughs> motherfucker i am so <laughs> jealous right now it's ridiculous That's so, <laughs> awesome. so and the uh, boxes of merchandise and stuff and the deal at the time was i mean this is back in you know in the late 80s yeah. and it was uh you have five receipts and you go see mike and you get one case free no way five Holy receipts <laughs> Yeah. So I went from being like just a regular guy on campus to the most popular guy in the neighborhood. And <laughs> Freaking right. <laughs> yeah. So then, That's so amazing. Then, yeah. So then in the summertime, uh, like, you know, obviously they have summer programs. So they said, Hey, you play some softball? I said, Yeah. They said, Okay, well, you want to stay in the summer? We're going to name you the Eastern, Eastern Ontario. <laughs> program director for uh, softball. Holy shit. <laughs> so they gave me this little uh, little van painted up like a Labatt blue can <laughs> and I got to tour around on weekends and, and play and, and visit and drop off beer and Holy shit. spend some money. So I did that for about three years. Most popular so, yeah. in so Ontario. Anyway. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But the funny part was whenever I was playing with Turpin, um, Grant Skinner, who uh, I'm not sure you guys are familiar with Grant, but he's in our in our softball Canada Hall of Fame. He played a little bit with uh, 
with uh, the national team and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, he played in that pro league out in, uh, in uh, the West for for a while. Okay. He was a Mol- he was a Molson salesman. Okay. So <laughs> so we pull in the parking lot, and anybody going to the game would see a Labatt Blue and a Molson truck <laughs> parked, you know, pretty close to each other, and. Uh, <laughs> And then Grant and I were teammates. So, and needless uh, yeah. to say, there was lots of beer at the ballpark. <laughs> there is always beer at the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! Actually, I got a question about the Ottawa Turpin, the Pontiac. Yeah. There. Did Did you guys come to Brookfield for a tournament in the late eighties? Because I can remember, um, I I lived right behind the ball field in Brookfield, and they had a tournament, a senior tournament, and it was in the eighties. And there was a team from Ottawa, and they were the Turpin Pontiacs, and they were dressed right to the nines like in silk uniforms and everything yeah. and yeah. uh i i uh, you brought that up and i was like oh that just rang that rang a bell with me yeah uh could have been i wasn't there uh but uh yeah they I, I, a lot of times they go east to uh that's for mines whenever that was a huge event right yeah. but i don't um but i don't remember ever going to nova scotia with them okay okay, okay. um but but uh, um, like i've you know, could they could have for sure. Sure. Um, I I do know that after senior kind of folded in Ottawa here, they also had a pretty good intermediate team and program going for for a few years there in the nineties. So uh, right on. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was uh, it was quite the experience. That's for sure. Uh, you know, I think I was in my early twenties playing with those guys, and oh. um, but uh, it was definitely. Uh, yeah, it was it was good softball, and the, the challenge around here was there just wasn't a lot of senior teams, so you had to go to yeah. you know the Toronto area to to find good competition yeah. and, and weekends and stuff. And so, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, now so, you you got to yeah. you actually got to come to Nova yeah, Scotia in '93, was nice. wasn't it? With the yeah, uh, Eastern Canadians yeah, with uh, yeah. We, um, our Cornwall team played in the provincials. Um, actually, it was in Ottawa here, and they had a well, it's funny because half of their team were guys I played with on uh, on Turpe. And, um, you know, it's funny how you can do that one year you're playing senior, and next year you're, you're kind of playing intermediate, yeah. and yeah. you know, senior B or whatever it is back in the day. And uh, we had some really good battles with them, and um. They ended up uh, uh, beating us in the final, and the, the winner got the berth to the Eastern Canadians. But they were allowed, I don't know, I can't remember two or three pickups or something like that. So, um, so they they asked me, and I went, and uh, we had a blast in in Nova Scotia. That's for sure. Um, you know, and I, I I want I want to say we won silver there, or you better did. yet, lost lost gold. Lost gold. Do you remember? Do you remember who yeah. you played in the final? I, I think it was a, a team sponsored by Keith. I may be wrong. Yeah, um, we Keith were. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He, yeah, he uh, he's teasing me ever since I was with Softball Canada about that. So uh, <laughs> of so course he, he had was. something to do with that team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were, Randy and I were talking about that because uh, we were thinking '93 was right around the Keith start of their program. The senior think. program. The senior program. Yeah. So they may have played in that intermediate yeah. prevent or they probably, intermediate Easterns that year. Yeah, and they then, probably went to nationals and then when they get, all got home, they were probably like, Well, it's in Halifax, why not put us in it? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't remember Yeah. Because yeah, I went to nationals with them in ninety four with the Keys. Okay. So they were senior then, I know. Yeah. But yeah. I thought they were in ninety three as well. So anyway. Yeah. Do you what do you do you remember anything about Halifax? Did you did, like, yeah, like well, like I Colin remember. Abbott story. <laughs> 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 Teaching Marty we had a pitch. At the, yeah, <laughs> we were staying at the Holiday Inn. I remember that. Oh, right, right, right by the Commons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, basically, the Ball Diamonds were just not too far away from there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think um, you know the the bar scene was uh, quite different than what. Uh, what happens here in Ontario? Because it used to be in Ontario at one o'clock, they shut everything down. Then you had to go to Quebec. Yeah. Okay, but I'm pretty, sh- not, pretty sure not here. in Nova Scotia <laughs> it was a little bit later. Three thirty, four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that first night, a bunch of us overindulged in uh, in a few bevies and uh, <laughs> nothing to do during the day. Uh, the next day, so I said, "Yeah, like you know, we can have a few." and uh, I remember walking the subway uh, about three o'clock for breakfast um, <laughs> the next day because <laughs> we were playing uh, the home team uh, that night. 
And, um, you know, and they were supposed to be tough. They were supposed to be good. So I'm assuming that's your, your key theme. Yeah, must sure enough, been, yeah. Yeah, sure enough, I think they gave us a little drubbing. I think it was about 9 or 10 to 1. Oh, and, shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, I, um, we obviously we were we, – we played much better the rest of the weekend, figured yeah. some things out. And, uh, and uh, I remember, I think uh, – and, again, I'm not 100% sure if it was a double elimination or – uh, but I think we had to beat them twice in the, in the final. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, we beat them the first game, and uh, it was a good game. And then uh, the second game, they gave us a pretty good drubbing. It wasn't it wasn't close. It was probably like six or seven mm-hmm. run differential. Um, but we ran out of gas, yeah. and uh, which always happens, like you know, whenever you're coming in the back door. Mm, for sure. Um, but I just remember the one time we had. Uh, a, a guy that was uh, more a sponsor than a coach, and he uh, wore his heart in his sleeve. And one of uh, one of the local guys crushed one off of us, and I think it was a three run shot to probably make it like six, seven, nothing. And he basically stood there and watched it. <laughs> and uh, as he's slowly trotting around the bases, he gets to third base, and our guy comes running out of the dugout, <laughs> and he runs from third base in with him just kind of jawing at him all the way down the, you know, all the way down yeah. the home plate. And then of course, back then both benches empty and a lot of words, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, we all went back to the Legion there, whatever. I think it was the Legion afterwards that <laughs> yeah. uh, sponsored everything. And, you know, Scotia Legion was, probably, yeah, probably yeah, Scotia right. Legion. Yeah. 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 It was good. And uh, that's where I think I first met Houghton. Um, uh, there because he's very unforgettable, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he probably didn't have much to say. No, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, at that point in time, I think they were trying to figure out how they would get me transferred to Nova Scotia, of course, so to play with the oh, yeah, yeah yep. work at the brewery and, and play with them. Uh, oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, for yeah. Probably tried to borrow money from you, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, <they're farther. laughs> anyway, yeah. so. On to the king in his court with Eddie Fainer. Yeah. Like, how did that all come to fruition? Yeah, so right around that same time, so 93, um, I'm working for Labatt. I'm playing multiple leagues. Um, and I, uh, so it was, um, I think it was Labor Day weekend. I'm in, uh, in London, Ontario, working um, the provincial championships for Labatt's for uh, softball. And the phone rings, and it's one of uh, uh, guys that I know from Messina, New York, which is, uh, as mentioned, is across from uh, Cornwall. Right. And I played with and against him for, I don't know, 10, 10 years. And uh, and uh, he says, uh, um, Eddie Fain and the King and Scott are coming to Messina. The pitcher got hurt. They're doing a show for NBC, that same timeline. They are uh, looking for a pitcher. Would you be interested? I'm going, okay, well, the king and his court, probably like, you know, one of the most recognizable Shit, yeah. softball teams yeah. in the world. Uh, um, yeah. And I said, absolutely. Like, you know, what do I got to do here? So, well, when are you home? I said, well, I'm home on Tuesday. So he says, well, the game's Thursday. Can you come over on Wednesday to meet him? I said, yeah, absolutely. So Wednesday night, uh, you know, we head over me and a friend of mine and uh we go into uh eddie's room and there he is he's chewing a cigar as he <laughs> i found out for many years he he constantly does that basically anytime he's awake so he's <laughs> chewing away at the cigar and uh you know and he uh stands up shakes my hand and first thing he says you're a big boy <laughs> i said yeah i said i'm a big boy he says uh all right, can you hit? I go, uh, well, I, yeah, I, you know, I hold my, hold my own. He goes, right. Can you pitch? I go, yeah. He goes, well, basically he says, okay, well, you come back here tomorrow and we'll see what you got. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I just drove an hour and a half for a two minute conversation that could have been done over the phone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so anyway, so the next day we show up and, uh, I get to the hotel, you know, a couple hours before the game and, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to tell me what I got to do. And basically they don't tell me anything. They just said, the only thing Eddie told me, he says, you're going to be playing first base. 
uh, while I'm pitching. He says, and obviously you got nobody behind you. So he said, anything hit over your head, you got to go get. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, then what I want you to do is, he says, I want you to time it, and I want you to throw the ball all the way in the air home, and we'll get the runner going home. And I said, okay. I said, Eddie, so they taught me to, to one-hop it. So I said, I'll just throw it nice and low, and, you know, it'll one-hop to the to the catcher. I don't want to overthrow him. He goes, nope. <laughs> You throw it all the way in the air. <laughs> I said, okay, Eddie. I, all right. So anyway, so sure enough, second batter of the game, ball goes over my head. And Dave Booth, who was playing shortstop, he's, you know, he's a massive guy. He's a former bodybuilder and, uh, you know, he's, he, he's a catcher. And anyway, so he's kind of running up a little bit and I get to the ball and he goes, okay, all the way in the air. So I throw the ball, like, you know, you take your two steps and you throw it and I, uh, I threw it all the way in the air. All right. Well, the threw it over the backstop, over the grandstand, and across the street to the parking lot, and into the one hopped into some guy's uh, patio or something. I think it was. And so anyway, so I'm thinking, oh shit, they're like, no, I'm just pissed Eddie off. And yeah. So anyway, so we get the we get the three out, and we're walking back, and I get close to him, and he goes. That was a good throw. You threw it far. And I said, all right. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just the story. Like, he, like, I mean, you've been on the road so long. Like, you know, you, mm. you want to see some different things and stuff. Yeah. And we were playing a modified team that night with a with a girl from Syracuse uh, University pitching. So, I mean, here I am. I'm playing, like, you know, senior ball and yeah. you know, facing some good pitching. And this girl's throwing her fastball, like, you know, from 42 feet or whatever she pitched from. And I had 10 at bats that night alone. Oh, like, yeah. you know, so, so yeah. it was just, it was a blast. It just hit me. <laughs> yeah. So, the next night we uh, went to Jamestown, New York. And uh, we're playing at the, at the time they had a single A franchise for the Expos. <laughs> So uh, we're playing, um, I think it was in between the doubleheader for them to get the crowd. And uh, so here I am, I'm, I'm warming up and I'm throwing, um, you know, basically long toss with, uh, with Booth. And and here this guy walks out of the dugout, one of the coaches, and I'm just going, okay. So then he comes and he stands behind me. And I mean, you can throw a big loop and curve ball yeah. from mm-hmm. 150 to 250 feet or 200 feet out and they were using this ball at the time. Fainer was, uh, it had a K-Pox center. So it was definitely, a, it was a little bit lighter and it was a great pitcher's ball. Oh yeah. So, so I'm throwing this big looping curve ball and this guy walks out and he stands behind me. And uh, then he starts asking me questions about how I make the ball break and what do I do? Like, and then he says, and, and you guys throw what's called a rise ball. And I said, yep. And he goes, how do you do that? So I'm showing them and stuff. And then uh, anyway, so, you know, after the warm up, he he thanks me and he walks away. And I look on the back of his jersey and it says Rigetti. It was Dave Rigetti. Frig oh my god, Jesus! Exactly. That's what I said. Oh my god, here's this Dave Rigetti. He was yeah. basically you know. So and I didn't know who the like, fuck he was. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I got another Gordy House story about that one that, that we can share later on. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, so I played four games that year with uh, with, with Eddie, uh, two in um, two in the states, and then we came across to play in uh, in Belleville and then in Aurora, where we played against uh, pretty decent intermediate teams. So uh, you know, the first couple of days, whenever we were playing modified and uh, and uh, the coaches and mayor and the sheriff and all those guys in Jamestown, Eddie pitched about three innings. But as soon as we got to Canada, I pitched five. I think it was. Oh wow! So, uh, oh yeah, but it was fun. It was uh, it was good. And then uh, a couple of weeks after I I got home, I got a, a call from him and asking if I'd be interested in in touring full time um, the following oh, year. So. Man. Yeah, so it's uh, that's how it started, and uh, it uh, it was a blast for you know for the um, the time I did it full time. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah. No, did Ed, did Eddie ever say like what it was like during the early years? Because I mean, I, all week I've been watching videos, you know, and really working hard. I yeah. heard. <laughs> oh, when I'm home, man. When I'm yeah, home, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I've seen like video you know, he was like in a major league stadium and it was half full 
and stuff like that. Like, you know, back in the, in the sixties and seventies, did he ever talk about, you know, what it was like doing it back then? Oh, he, he talked about, I mean, we shared so much time together in the van, right. Where we, we drove basically coast to coast, coast to coast in the U S and, uh, you know, so yeah. Um, uh, I mean, the man was amazing for what he accomplished. There's no, nobody questions that. And I mean, he dedi- dedicated himself to, to the road, like, you know, mm. for, for uh, his time uh, that he was there and, and it, it'll, it'll never happen again, put it that way. But yeah. um, he had so many, so many great stories. And uh, you know, the one, the one thing I regret uh, with, uh, with Eddie was the, the one year I, I didn't play. I, I think I played 94, 95, and I took 96 off. And in 96, they showed up in Florida and, uh, and um, they played golf with Ted Williams. Oh, oh man! Wow! Yeah, so it was the year I didn't go, and it's like, oh my god, you bonehead! Yeah, you so know, Mike, so. you didn't know Dave Rigetti, and you missed out playing with <laughs> Ted Williams. Yeah! Wow! Yeah, man. but I mean, there's some great. Uh, there's other great, like I said, Gordy Howe was a was yeah. a great one that we can get into, and then yeah, what what's up with that so one? So many. Um, so <laughs> so Gordy, uh, Gordy, and Eddie were were pretty good friends. There's uh, there's a nice. Um, frame piece out there of both of them one uh kings of their sport or something uh and uh anyways we're in traverse city michigan and uh it was probably late july and uh you know they had a saying on the court that's not going to fly in august because you just spent four or five months with the guys and you're kind of getting fed up and you know you got lots of money in the bank and stuff like that. So it's like, you know what? Like, you know, that's not going to fly in August. So anyway, so <laughs> we are playing in uh, Traverse city and uh, my girlfriend uh, actually is my wife. Now she, um, she was with me. She came on the road for about a week and uh, we were, we were uh, maybe the first or second inning. And there was, and there was me, Gary West and Rich Hoppy and Eddie and, um, you know, so, uh, I'm playing, I can't remember if I'm playing short or, or, uh, anyways, all of a sudden Eddie stops, he was pitching and he just stops and then he walks over to the microphone. So I'm looking at hop and I'm going, like, I give him the, the shoulders and uh, like, what's going on? He goes, I, I don't know. So he say he just says, ladies and, and Eddie was known to do some crazy stuff. Like, you know, like what's he doing? Like, you know, we <laughs> But uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> um, he, Eddie gets the mic. He goes, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to um, Gordy and Colleen Howe. Come on over, good friends of mine. So anyway, so Gordy Howe walks across the diamond with his wife, Colleen, and they go sit on our bench. And there's wow. my wife to be on the bench. And so anyway, so I could see hers. Uh, Gordy's wife sits beside my wife, and uh, Gordy's on the other side. And uh you know, now here I am on playing short, and I'm thinking, okay, here's Gordy Howe. I got to get this signed. I got to do this. I got to get <laughs> this for this guy. And you know, so um, so anyway, so we get the three out, and we go in, and of course, I'm I'm leading off. So I just Eddie introduces me, and we shake hands, and uh, you know, and and then uh, I go and I hit, and and then the show keeps moving along, and Gordy's sitting there and stuff, and my wife and and Colleen are, are talking away and stuff, and. So anyway, so uh, I think it was about the fourth inning. All of a sudden, I look over and they're gone, and I'm going, "Oh shit!" Yeah. <laughs> I haven't like I, I like you know because the show's going on, right? Our games are going on and stuff. So I kind of mosey in, dug out in between innings, and I'm getting my gloves on because I mean we hit every inning, right? There's mm-hmm. only four of us, and Eddie didn't Eddie didn't really hit that often. The only time he hit is whenever he was pissed off at us. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I, I I'm getting my gloves on and I look and I go, "Man, uh, uh, do you know who that was?" And she looks and she goes. Was he a hockey player? <laughs> and I just said, "What? Like, was he a hockey player?" That's it. We're we're done. We're done. You're going. You're, you're flying home tomorrow. <laughs> so anyway, so like you know, so the rest of the game, I'm pissed off, and I'm going, "I don't freaking believe I didn't get anything signed in his." You know. Uh, so anyway, so as we always do at the end of the game, we sell programs, and we have, uh, um, you know. A, a, a chance to sign autographs for the kids or mm-hmm. if they want to buy a t-shirt or balls or whatever. So here we are, we're, you know, we're by the van, uh, 
you know, we're selling all that stuff. And then all of a sudden this great big black Lincoln Continental pulls up and I'm going, who the heck is that? Sure enough, Gordy pops out. He stands wow. there and he signs, signs autographs with every, like, you know, there's a whole bunch of kids there. Yeah. All, all of a sudden the kids went from, from me to him. Right? <laughs> yeah. Why? So, Why? Which, which is understandable. So yeah. anyway, so, um, I'm watching Gordy and, 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 uh, kind of standing close to him and now I'm talking to him and, and, uh, well, he's from, he's, I'm, I'm the only one from Canada, basically the, that, uh, there's been two of us on that team full time from Canada. And so, I mean, like I, they always referred to me as a Canadian kid and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. anyway, so I'm talking with Gordy and he's from um, Saskatchewan and, uh, he's putting a dot on every kid's nose after he signs their autograph, <laughs> his autograph. <laughs> So after all the kids are gone and stuff and we're all standing around, I go, Gordy, why do you dot every kid's nose? <laughs> he goes, you know, he says, I've been doing this so long. And he says, kids used to get back in line. Now I know if they show up and they got a dot on, on their nose. I already got I've that. already done their yeah. <laughs> Man, that's smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, so we're standing around and he, he uh, walks over to his Lincoln, pops, pops open the trunk, and he has six, six sticks for us autographed a bunch of books, a bunch of pucks. And he goes, boys, come on over. He says, we're going to the restaurant for dinner. Holy shit. So, Cause you know, what? Oh yeah. So, yeah. So, so for the next two and a half hours, so it was me and Gordy Al and Rich and Eddie and my wife. And Jesus. you know, we had a great dinner and got some great memories, some great photos. And, uh, I Absolutely. still married my wife too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's we, we knew that part. <laughs> Actually, I have a, personal story with Gordy Howe. Actually. This isn't your podcast. But uh, no, when, I was seven, <laughs> when I was seven years old, Gordy had a hockey school in Brookfield and it was him and, and Mark, his son, that put on the hockey school and uh, all the off-ice stuff we went into Truro to do. Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, we we're doing off-ice stuff and we ate at the cafeteria there and we were leaving to go do something in the field and I had a knot in my, in my sneaker. So I was behind everybody. I was sitting on the steps and I was like, I, you know, seven years old, I'm trying to get a nod at my yeah. sneaker. And next thing I, I hear behind me is, uh, do you need some help? And I turn around, it's Gordy Howe. No way. And anyway, he proceeded, wow. he proceeded to get the nod out of my shoelace and, and then punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, elbow, no. elbow, yeah elbow. tie your fucking sneakers, kid. <laughs> <laughs> elbow to the face and say, get over there to that yeah. field. But, uh, yeah, no, that like, yeah. that's always going to stick awesome, with me. Man. That's crazy. Like, that's like you said, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of guy yeah. Gordy was, right? It's amazing. Yeah. Great, great man. And I, I spoke to him anytime I, I could, uh, I went to a Red Wings game and he's there with Ted Lindsay uh, signing wow. autographs with a book. And I stood in line and then as soon as I saw him, I, like I didn't expect him to recognize me or anything. I said, Gordy, it's Mike from the King of His Court. A big handshake and how you doing? This is my good friend, Ted Lindsay. Or, wow. You know, I'm just thinking, oh yeah, so down to earth. Uh, did he dot your great, nose? Great man. <laughs> yeah, did he dot your nose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, what a great it's story. Great. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, That's amazing. Yeah. Actually, yeah, so we we're spoiled. I got another um, question. Other, uh, another thing yeah. that you uh, that you sent me there on email is the uh, the prison story in uh, New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's amazing so we had, oh there's there's uh several prison stories that uh you know the the funny part about any prison that you you played in it was more serious the inmates wanted to actually really kick the snot out of you like they yeah. <laughs> they didn't want to go along with anything i mean there was no fans there you couldn't use the line well how many people do you get at your town league games whenever you know, like with the prisoners, there's no fans. It's just the prisoners, right? Yeah, and, but uh, so with no fans, do they have teammates. cheerleaders like the longest yard? <laughs> 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 hey, Brent Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, don't laugh, but the, my first ever experience oh, in the prison was right on the Florida, Georgia line. And the funny part was, oh, that I think it was one of these ones where it, uh, that there was a time change and we messed up. We were either an hour early or an hour late. I can't remember. Right. Well, it was, it was probably an hour late actually, because they were waiting and weren't sure we were coming. So yeah, so it was, so anyway, so we're hurrying up through the check-in point and stuff. And, uh, you know, me being the youngest guy, like we had to transfer everything from the van that we needed yeah. into the prison because they wouldn't let us drive the van in. And right. 
So anyway, so we're going through, and back then they really didn't check your ID a heck of a lot the way they do now, but they, they did you know, a pretty thorough check of us, and they stamped your hand. And I said, so what's this do? And he goes, well, you need that stamp to get out. Oh, said, okay, well, you better better stamp this hand over here, too, and maybe <laughs> behind my – because, I mean, it's, it, you're, you're like you're in Florida. And, and you're going to sweat. It's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So, anyways, I'm the fourth, first guy through, and as I'm walking through, of course – you get to the uh, the wreck area and you got to go through all the, the weights, the outdoor weights and stuff like that. So I'm walking right through there and I got my Kings Court uniform on and stuff. And I'm, you know, late 20s or whatever I was. And I'm walking through and all of a sudden I say, I hear, hey, jail bait, come here. Oh. Going, oh my God, just don't look, just keep going. <laughs> yeah. So we kept, I, I kept going, but uh, yeah, you're right, cheerleaders and stuff. And uh, Jesus. You know, we, we got out of that game. It was uh, it was kind of interesting. They were using a ball called a piranha. I don't know if you guys ever heard of them, No, but they were hard as rock. Not a great pitching ball, but a hitting ball. And this, oh, yeah. They had this one guy that thought he was really good and he was throwing, you know, 60 miles an hour modified type of thing with that straight you know not too much movement so let me say he didn't last too long with, <laughs> yeah, with yeah, and, really <laughs> <laughs> but the prison story you're referring to yeah we went to uh i think it was new jersey cherry hill new jersey, or, yeah. or somewhere and and we're uh you know we're doing the check-in as you always do and and uh the the guy in charge of bringing us in the rec director or whatever he goes boys there's uh been a little bit of unrest here in the last few days and and uh, we almost canceled your show, but we thought it'd be good for, for morale with the prisoners to make sure that the show went on. And <laughs> yeah, Let's you know, use us as the <laughs> guinea pigs here. We're yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. So he says, I just want to let you know that uh, we have the snipers in the guard towers, and uh, if anything happens at all, he says, just don't move. We got everything under control. And I said, okay, great. Like, you know, I'm thinking that meanwhile, I'm going, holy shit, let me get out of here. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so anyway, so we're playing this, and it, it's a horrible diamond. Like, you know, it's a, it's just one of the things, there's no side fences. They got a bench, uh, and that's it. And the prisoners are all, you know, huddled around you and they're close and they're asking you for everything. Like, you know, you got to smoke, you got to oh, have those wristbands, yeah. those glasses and stuff like that. But anyways, these, these guys weren't very good. We were playing against and um, Eddie pitched the first inning and we got through, through that. And he says, Mike, you go, you go ahead and throw now. So anyways, uh, I think I, I, I don't think I faced, if I faced nine guys in three innings, that's, I mean, I don't think we got to 10, put it that way. And yeah. finally, the guy that was kind of the coach, he's, uh, he's a huge man. And, it's probably about six, six, three something. And like, you know, he, you could just tell that he, he was the man in the prison. He ran that, you know, yeah. he's, he's yelling at these guys in Spanish and <laughs> I'm just like going, okay, I wonder what he's saying, but you could just tell he's pissed. And I mean, I don't even think they were getting saw balls. Like, you know, they were just missing. They don't play the game. So yeah. Anyways, they were just like waving at the rise ball. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, so he's had enough. And we get two out, and next thing you know, he grabs the bat, and he comes walking out to the mound, staring. And I'm going, oh, like, holy shit. Okay. So I looked at Eddie, and I said, Eddie, what do I do? And he says, strike the motherfucker out. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> so, all right. So I threw the first one, and Hoppy was catching. And, uh, like, you know, I, I think the ball hit his glove, and Hoppy stood up to throw it back to me, and he swung. Like, he was so <laughs> far behind it, right? Yeah. So anyway, so I threw the second one and he wasn't close to that. And then Eddie says, time. And I'm looking at Hoppy. I'm going, oh, shit, what are we doing now again? Here we go again. Like, this isn't in the script. So he he takes a few steps in from first base and he goes, sir, do you play slow pitch? And I'm going, oh, great. Like, you know, like it's going to piss this guy off. So anyway, so the guy kind of just grumbled something and, and Eddie starts walking back to me. He goes, Mike, he says, lob one in there and let him hit it. So I said, okay. <laughs> so I just kind of just like, you know, soft toss one underhand yeah. to him and he swings and well, he pops it up about, I don't know, 15, 20 feet. And it doesn't go almost directly to me. I think I had to move <laughs> two steps back or something. Right. So yeah. I catch the ball. And we, we always had our own ball. So it's in my hand and I'm kind of like, I start to 
walk. But meanwhile, this guy who kind of moseyed a little bit towards first base is now walking towards me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and he still has his bat in his hand, right? And I'm thinking, okay, the guard says, don't move. Don't <laughs> move, no matter what. So this guy's walking, and he's getting closer and closer. And I kind of look at, at Hoppy, and Hoppy's standing there with his mask behind home plate still going I don't know. Let's he's got this dumb look on his face. And Eddie's, you know, he's mid sixties or uh, whatever he was at the time. He's standing by first and he never used to even stop. Like he would just walk in. Now he kind of stopped and he's looking and he, and I'm starting to, okay, like what the hell, what do I do? Like, do I throw the ball at him? Do I turn around and run? Like, so meanwhile, he's getting closer and closer. And yeah. And I'm going, and then finally, I'm just thinking to myself, okay, shoot him. Shoot him. <laughs> like, fuck, he's getting too close. And fair enough. Like, you know, he gets within three feet of me, and he sticks out his hand, and he goes, you're good. Good pitching. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, sir, because I just shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's funny. So. When you tell that story, I'm picturing uh, Michael Clark Duncan from the Green Mile. Yeah. Hey, you good pitcher, man. <laughs> He was, yeah, that's a good, yeah, it was a good comparison because he was like he was cut, he was huge, and yeah, so it was uh, it was interesting, that's for sure. That's amazing. But uh, oh yeah, I remember the first ball uh, we hit that went over the, the the outfielder's head there, and uh, next thing you know, some prisoner from I don't know two hundred feet away from that wasn't even at the game. He comes running out, picks up the ball, and turns around, and runs away. <laughs> yeah i wonder what he's so gonna use like, it okay. for <laughs> like, who knows? where'd yeah. the ball go <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, okay yep i guess so, so yeah um, <laughs> yeah so that was kind of uh any prison that we ever played in was very very interesting that's for sure yeah listen but, tell uh, us uh anything. we heard a story of something to do with guantanamo bay can you can you touch on that one Spending several yep. days there, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite the experience. It was, uh, you know, we were uh, scared, jealous. I think <laughs> no, no, not at all. Oh, really, there, it was no. pretty, it was, yeah, it was it's pretty all good. It, uh, you. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, it was. Um, I want to say probably oh five, oh six, or something. Uh, Eddie was uh, really going downhill at the time, oh, and. Yeah. Uh, um, he was in a wheelchair and stuff, but he was still, uh, um, touring and, you know, doing whatever he did, the pitching show whenever he could and yeah. still work, excuse me, still work the mic and stuff. And, um, anyway, so, uh, we had to Jacksonville, Florida and we did a couple of games there for the base and, uh, and then we were going to go to, to Guantanamo Bay. And, um, so we were flying on a military plane across and going to uh, Guantanamo and I think we were going to spend three nights there and, and play we, were, we had to do a couple of clinics and uh, and then play a game oh yeah and there was some pretty uh, obviously you don't get to go to Guantanamo uh, especially a you know a Canadian guy to, yeah, yeah. to experience it so they treated us like rock stars it was great I mean <laughs> everything was there for us yeah. uh, you know uh, but it, it does shut down uh you know, it shuts down pretty quick. Um, uh, like, you know, as soon as it gets dark, there's not really a heck of a lot to do. They got the, the bowling alley and that's probably about it. Oh yeah. But, um, yeah. So it, uh, it was interesting. Um, you know, there's some pretty cool things that, uh, we played golf there and, uh, you know, as we're in the, uh, as we're just getting ready to tee off and stuff and, uh, the starter comes over and he goes, Hey guys here, you're going to need these. So I'm going, okay. He gives us a piece of grass, basically a little, you know, I don't know, foot by foot or whatever it is. And yeah. He says, wherever your ball lands, you pick it up and you put uh, this grass down and then you got to hit off the grass. I said, okay. So anyway, so we get to the drive up to the first hole and now I understood why there was no grass. Oh, and yeah, and you know, you you drive the ball, and I think that's the first time I ever hit a 400 foot or 400 yard drive. Because <laughs> I mean, I think I hit it 200 in the air, and then it just kind of just kept going and going and going. It was hard as rock. There was no water, so I mean, yeah, we were all just crushing the ball. But <laughs> it was really interesting. Oh, but um, one of the neatest stories about Guantanamo Bay was uh, the Marines are there. They protect 
basically like, you know, keep people from coming. The, the only time the gates open, they tell me is there's there at the time, there were still some people from Cuba that were coming in to work the base. And um, that's the only time the, the gates open was to let these people in and out every day. Right. And then there was a certain area where uh, even the people on Guantanamo were not allowed to uh, pass. It was only the Marines. So anyway, so they took us on a tour. Um, the Marines brought us down to the to the gate, and they took us up into the you know the guard house and stuff. And you know, there's some binoculars there, and uh, and the one guy's looking. and He goes, "Hey, come here." And I go, "Okay, what like what? What am I looking at?" He goes, "Here, just look over here." And so he he kind of steers me, and I come eye to eye with somebody like you know 200 yards away or whatever looking at us. Wow. So it was, uh, yeah, it was kind of neat. It was like all of a sudden, because it was their military, keeping an eye on what goes oh, on. Oh, is that right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of freaky, but uh, it was uh, it was really a neat trip. And obviously the, you know, the prison uh, itself was, we didn't get close to that, but uh, yeah. we drove through the old one. And I mean, that was just right out of Rambo. Like, is that right? Like it was, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the little fence in and like, you know, the holes in the ground with the, with the grates over them and stuff like that. Jesus. It was just, it was really, yeah. Yeah. It was kind of uh, scary, but uh, very scary. Yeah. But that's where softball took me. So I, I couldn't. No, it's me. amazing. Just to think you get to go there because of softball. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah, because you were being uh, bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to leave. So, yeah. yeah. There you go. That's right. Mike, I want to yeah. talk to you about uh, 99 and 2000 ISCs with uh, Amsterdam. Uh, yeah. Tell us about that experience. How, how was that? I mean, you fared pretty well in, the, in 99. <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, we, uh, I got, um, you know, in 98, I got married um, towards the end of, uh, of the summer, late August and stuff. And I um, uh, told Eddie, like, you know, I wasn't coming back in 99. And uh, my wife is from upstate New York. And we had been going to a tournament there, uh, Sable Forks, since so probably I was 17, I think it was. And um, that's where I met my wife was at that, that tournament. And um, anyway, so I'm, I'm kind of not with a, a good team, um, you know, a, a good ISC team, I guess you could say. I have you know, a few intermediate teams. So I'm uh, basically a free agent at this Los Able tournament. New York Spirit were coming and I get the phone call um, saying like, you know, will you come play with us this weekend? And I said, sure. Yeah. So um, I'm playing and we, uh, I, it's one of those events where anybody goes, anybody that's, um, you know, they, they have no restrictions. So it's like pretty much open, it's, which is great. And right. which I, I wish more were like that. And, um, but anyway, so it's just the, the two top teams are basically us and Haslam and, um, you know, New York spirit versus Haslam. They're both in the same district in the U S they're both trying to qualify for the world's, um, you know, they got to play down and stuff, uh, afterwards as well. So there's a lot of, animosity brewing there they have yeah. uh they have steve price and they had uh oh who else did they have um i can't remember off the top of my head but pricey was one of the main guys mm -hmm. and we had uh we had Derek coleman Derek darren ray so mm -hmm. we were both pretty good and we had uh, a couple of young uppercomers from new zealand Bruce casely and uh <laughs> No. And um, Sorry. <laughs> Daniel Daniel Milne, yeah. Oh yeah. So they were both, uh, you know, right around twenty-ish years old. So they were, I think it was their first year in in the uh, U.S. and also with the ISCs and stuff. So we were we were pretty good. I was playing first or third, and um, anyway, so uh, I think it was third inning of our first game against Heflin in the final, and both benches empty. Oh wow! <laughs> and I go. Yeah, I'm going, okay, great. So I'm going, oh, what's going on here? So anyways, so sure enough, we play him again in two weeks uh, in one of these ISC qualifying, I forget what they were called back then. It was just one of those in your district you had to, yeah. whoever wanted to register and play, but nobody wanted to play New York Spirit or Heflin. So it was just us against them in a best of uh, five over the course of the weekend. Well, I think mm -hmm. the first three games, I think we had two bench clearing balls. Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. They just didn't like each other. There was beans 
going back and forth and stuff. And I think they ended up beating us. But then, of course, we get the invite to go to the Worlds anyways, which everybody kind of knew whoever wasn't going to win was going to get an invite. Yeah. So it was in Sioux City. And um, I remember I was it's six hours for me to go to uh, Albany, New York, which is closest airport from Amsterdam, where most of those guys were staying and stuff. So I just flew out of Ottawa. And I flew the morning of, and I think we had a game at like six o'clock and I was supposed to land maybe by one. Well, I got to the game in the third inning. Oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, great, great start. Like, you know, yeah. here you are, your first world tournament. And, uh, and we won, I think it was five or six nothing. Coleman threw a, a perfect game and, uh, Joey Basaber, I think, I think we were playing a team from Saskatchewan. Okay. And, uh, anyway, so, uh, we moved on and I, sure enough, I got to, to DH the next game and, uh, and we were playing a, um, team out of Colorado or the, the bandits, Pueblo bandits or something. Yep. yep. And, uh, yep. So I, I, I was batting behind Mike Mink and, uh, Mike used to play for Tampa smokers and big swinger, home run hitter, uh, you know, but never really hit a great average. Like, you yeah. know, so, but I mean, he hit some monster home runs and great. And like I said, we had Casey and we had Milm and, uh, Darren Ray. And so we had a pretty decent lineup. Um, so sure enough, we get, and back then too, in 99, it was double the limb. So I want to say that it was probably 30 to 40 teams somewhere in there. And, you know, you make the, the, the top 10, you make it to the final couple of days, you're doing quite well. Oh, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and we played Larry Miller and, um, Utah. Yeah. And they had, uh, I think they had Dewey and uh, one of the veteran guys that was pretty good. I can't, for right now, the name escapes me. And as soon as we yeah. hang up, I'll think of it. Anyways, well, I think it was Casey and Mink. They went back to back, and I'm up next, right? And usually what happens, dotted. you know, is, yeah. So I got dotted. And uh, anyways, we went on, and we had some uh, pretty good success. And uh, we got beat out, I think, by by Waterloo, I think it was that year, and Robbie Schwire. And uh, it's a good game, but we just, uh, again, Coleman threw pretty much every game because uh i was an out of area guy so i couldn't throw and uh-huh. uh, and uh you know and darren ray just uh i forget it he was an out, considered out of area as well or what but anyways coleman threw pretty much everything and um we got beat out and i left i went home the next day um didn't stay for the the final day and then i got a call saying uh Hey, congratulations. You just won first team. So I had a pretty good week. Um, my only regret was I, I left, uh, like I said, after we got beat out, I left the next day and, uh, yeah. and missed the award ceremony. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of cool. Was and then cool. the following year, yeah, we went to, uh, St. Joe, Missouri. And the whole ironic part of that was I just played there in 98 with, with Eddie. Okay. Against, uh, yeah. So, uh, so I mean, it was kind of neat to walk back into the ballpark and see exactly what they did with the setup and stuff. And, uh, and it was, uh, yeah, we, uh, we did okay. I, I didn't do as well that year, but, uh, but, um, the team finished, I think top 10 again, seventh or eighth or something. And, yeah. and then, uh, shortly either the next year or the year after they merged with uh broken bow. Mm-hmm. But, um, I, I, you know, by then, like I said, we we were going to start a family, and I just six hour drive, uh, you know, yeah, to Amsterdam and stuff, and I just, uh, you know, so it was great. Well, it lasted. I, you know, did I still played competitively here, and but um, yeah, those two years with uh, New York Spirit were definitely, uh, um, you know, things I sure I. I you know forever cherish uh, yeah. you know meeting those guys and even last year whenever I was in New Zealand with uh, the junior men's team the U18s uh, you know Reese was on the um, yeah the New Zealand match on the host com- oh. well, he's on the host committee that's right yeah. yeah. 
So anyway, so it was like, hey, and then he looks at me, he goes, Pudgy, and I go, yeah, and great big hug and stuff. So, you know, how oh, you doing? Cool. And cool. yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's those types of things that you, uh, that you remember. Oh, freaking awesome. right. I mean, we talk about it on here all the time about, you know, softball family, you know. Oh my God. Yeah. You, you play against a guy once and you're like, no, well, Frank. <laughs> Hey. I know, I know that guy for life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Best we're playing with him. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I got a yeah. question, Mike. Uh, what was it like yeah. going, like you know, after playing so many years with King of this Court, and then going into ISC level ball? Like that must have been, you know, uh, had to be a change for you. It was a huge change. I mean, I, you know, I, uh, the funny part is Eddie used to always say, "Well, I can't play nine ball. I don't get to hit every fourth time." <laughs> you know, so I mean, like, yeah, you're only hitting three times a game, but, uh, no, honestly, uh, it, uh, it was a challenge. It was different. Um, but to be blatantly honest, I, I missed out on playing that. Like yeah. you know, a lot of times whenever yeah. you're, you're playing or you're pitching or something, some people say, well, you know, what's the hardest pitch you ever throw? And like the hardest pitch I ever threw with the King of his court had, you know, there was, it really didn't matter. There was nothing on the line. Right. Yeah, I know what you show, mean. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if the guy from third base scored, he scored. So what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but I mean, if you're up two to one in the bottom of the seventh and, you know, you got about five grand on the line in a tournament or something. Yeah. yeah you know, different. that, that means something. So I, I did miss that, that side of it. But I mean, I also got to play in front of, yeah. you know, 10, 10, 12,000 people. I met a lot of great people. Of course. Uh, you know, I, I, it's funny because the other day we were talking and, and I said, I've actually been in every state in the U.S. except Hawaii. Wow. That's so, nuts. you know, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 So I got to play ball and it, uh, you know, and with now with social media, I, I stay in touch with, with mm -hmm. so many of the different guys. And, you know, I got to be part of the last tour, the last uh, games in 2011. It ended back uh, where it started, where Eddie was born in Walla Walla, Washington. So oh, I probably I was, played about. I was going to ask you about that. Games. I was going to ask you about that last game. Yeah. How, how, like, yeah. how, how was that? That must have been, you know, <laughs> you know, must have been pretty emotional. Yeah, it was good. I mean, the crowd was, was, was good. Um, you know, I think it was more, to be honest, it was more for us than it was for the crowd. Right. Like, you know, yeah. just to bring closure and Eddie was such a big part of a lot of our, our lives. And, uh, also, um, the game of softball and the promotion of the game of softball and, you know, to, to end it where it started was, was kind of, um, you know, it was almost surreal in the fact that like, like we had the van and we left the keys to the van there, and, oh, yeah. you know, basically, uh, just little things like that. And, you know, it's one of those games where usually you're trying to get out of the, like, you know, as quick as you can and get back yeah. to the hotel. But there we just, everybody kind of just hung around for, right. for hours, just kind of, you know, talking and sharing stories. And yep. it was, uh, it was pretty neat. I was so glad I was part of that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Well, well, it's on to the, uh, the player association part of the show. <laughs> yeah, you're turning into a peaches interview right now. We're getting long, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's I'm right. just kidding, Mike. I'm totally kidding. Nobody, uh, will, nobody will ever go as long as peaches did because I will not let that happen again. I'll tell idiot. you what, though. We can, at the Canadians this year, uh, yeah. we can sit around the, the yeah. beer garden and I can tell you a few more because there's a lot of great ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Stuff we can't put on yeah. here, but uh, yeah. Uh, shush, shush. Oh, Peach, Peaches, if you're listening, we love you, man. Oh, frig, yeah, Peaches. <laughs> you were the greatest, actually. <laughs> anyway. It was just long. Yeah. Love you, though. On to the uh, Player Association. I'm going to list the player. You can say as much or as little about them as you want. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, Paul Walford. Yeah, Wally was a great teammate uh, with the New York Spirits. Uh, you know, and there's a guy that hit up in the order. I, I never mentioned him, but... Uh, he was one of the first guys that I really um, said, oh, my God, this guy's a leader. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he just carried himself in, in certain ways. He was great. Uh, he was, uh, you know, one of the, the first guys to speak up in huddles. He, uh, you know, he was one of the first guys to, to have his cleats on and be stretching. And uh, he, he was just he was just the, the he was just a professional like he was just, there's no other, no other word for him. And, 
and how this goes full circle is probably that last year in 2011, whenever I was with Eddie and one of the, the trips I did make was in Florida and, and we're going to this outside of Tampa um, game and I pull in and, and who's there Wally's catching and there's a big left-hander pitching no way. Cody Henniger. No, no way. way. <laughs> Absolutely. That's crazy. So, That's yeah. So, I mean, it's just ironic how things just kind of, yeah. you know, twist and they get back to you. And so, yeah, Wally and I, uh, of course we, you know, we headed out to, to one of Jody and Paul's favorite spots and, uh, you know, we shared a bunch of stories that night for oh, sure. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, but Wally, uh, uh, he's just, uh, there's no words, but he was one of the first leaders. That's for sure. That I've ever really said, man, oh man, that guy knows what he's doing. Perfect. That's and believe me, like there's ever since then, though, there's been a lot of guys with Team Canada that I've said similar mm-hmm. things. Oh, about. for sure. So, yeah. 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 All right. Next on the list is uh, Daniel Mellon. Um, he was, he was quiet. Like oh, Daniel yeah. was very, very quiet. Uh, again, a great teammate. Uh, you know, they, uh, they all did, you know, their own thing in the sense of, uh, for getting ready. And Daniel was also, you know, uh, he was young at the time I knew him and, uh, um, he just, he just went about his business. He hit, he, he caught, he did whatever he wanted. And like, you know, he's not a catcher, but I, I remember we had to put him in there to catch, yeah. you know? So he was just a, a great teammate as well. Right on. All right, uh, Gary West. <laughs> oh my God, we could go on for an hour. With Gary West. I figured <laughs> he's just. Uh, uh, I really, really uh, love my time with Gary. Uh, unfortunately, Gary lost his eye to cancer um, before I was uh, with the team, and um, you know, so he's uh, he struggled along. But I, uh, the funniest sports comedian I've ever known. And that's how he's, he's, you know, he's, he's pointed in the games. He was Eddie's personal catcher that first year I played with him. Um, you know, he's just a, a great man. Um, and I tell you one thing, that guy, wherever we went, he got us free golf. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> he, was, he was like, he was just the guy. Yeah, he's just a great, great man. And he could talk. Uh, he should have been a salesman as opposed to a ball player because he just was, was great. Uh, I really, really enjoyed my time with Gary. Uh, a quick story about Gary. Um, whenever Hoppy used to go in, Hoppy and I would catch and pitch each other because Gary obviously would. Yeah, you know, with one eye had a challenge, and Gary would go play short, and Eddie would go play first base. Mm-hmm. But Gary always had this thing; he would always be talking and cracking, and like you know, getting the fans going and stuff. And one time, I, I was catching, and I put a pickoff play on with Gary, and I wasn't sure if he saw it or not, <laughs> but I said he must have saw it, like you know. So, anyways, <laughs> so like he's like kind of just moping around second base talking away and talking to the guy and so i gonna throw down the second base he doesn't see it at all it was right by his ear and he still didn't know he just kept talking (laughs) the ball went out in center field and him and the guy are just talking and oh my god i laughed so hard but gary was uh but uh yeah gary is uh is one of the best. Oh, yeah. That's great. Uh, next is, uh, you just brought him up, Rich Hoppy. Hoppy, uh, I, for what he, he's accomplished, uh, a lot of people don't know. Um, he's, I mean, even in 2011, I think he was over 60 years old doing, like, you know, the trick pitches and, yep. and stuff. And, he started, uh, he's even, you know, way back in the seventies, he was pitching high level and playing senior. And, um, you know, he also owned a, uh, one, of a, a successful bar in, in Bayonne, New Jersey called Poppy's pub. And anyway, so he, uh, great name. Great. Yeah. He was, uh, well, I mean, I spent, I think three of my years with, with Rich on tour and, uh, we became really good friends and he started a program called the King of the King of Diamonds. And, uh, Rich was, uh, you know, an alcoholic back in the day and he, uh, he's been clean and sober for, you know, for 25, 26 years now. Good for him. And, 
Yeah. And he continues to give back to communities and, and programs. I remember, uh, we're in Key West, Florida and, uh, Hoppy says, come on. I go, where are we going? Like, you know, it's nine o'clock at night. We, we don't play till tomorrow. Where, where are you taking me? I know you're not taking me to a bar. Where are we going? <laughs> so, uh, we stopped at the Key West jail. He goes, I need you to catch. So we just went downstairs. Uh, he had made arrangements and there's about 10 prisoners came over and he gave him a talk and then he demonstrated about 10 or 12 pitches and wow. between his legs, behind his back and stuff. And, you know, that was the type of guy Hoppy was. Wow. Like he found a meeting wherever we were and he yeah. just, uh, you know, was just a, a, and he's writing a book and he keeps, uh, you know, he, he was, all of a sudden my, you know, my email will, will blow up and it'll be hoppy. Well, what were we doing here? And can you send me what you remember about that? So yeah. his, his book's supposed to come out this spring. So oh, cool. Right. Cool, cool. To, uh, to, yeah. So uh, another, you know, another beauty of a guy, that's for sure. Yeah. I did actually, I didn't know a lot, a lot about Rich. And then this week, you know, doing the research and everything, watching videos and everything, man, he, yeah. uh, he got Eddie's routine down. <laughs> like, Oh yeah, absolutely. Unreal. It was, yeah, it was fun catching him. It was really, it was a lot of fun catching him. And, uh, you know, and the, the problem that we had with, with us, both of us is neither one of us had time to put a jock on, right? Like it was like back then, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the only thing I ever asked was, was Hoppy, just tell me whenever a drop's coming. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he would get so much in his routine that he would never tell me. <laughs> so I ended up catching side saddle as much as I could. Yeah. You had to. But, Good idea. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Oh, it was funny. I must've hit him in the chest maybe 10 times on a low rise ball. <laughs> you know, just because he, I mean, he wasn't a catcher and it yeah. was, uh, you know, he was just there, but, uh, oh, it was fun. Oh yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, of course we got to end it off with, uh, Eddie Fainer. Oh, I mean, Eddie Fainer was, uh, you know, it's funny because a lot of uh, us uh, guys that have played with him over the years and full-time players will will share some things, and, and we always call it the University of Eddie Tainer. Just because if you've ever done there and been there and done it with him, you know, you learn so much. And uh, it's his way or no way or else, like, you know, he wouldn't have made it for 55-plus years. And he's structured in that sense, but he's also uh, – you know, he's, he comes across as a tough drill sergeant at times, but he's got the biggest heart in the world, um, you know, at other times. Yeah. He was a showman. Uh, he was a, a great guy. He was great for the game of softball, um, you know, and I really appreciate what he did for me, like uh, giving, a, you know, a Canadian kid a, a chance at, yeah. uh, you know, playing with one of the world famous softball teams and, you know, uh, sad to see him go back in, uh, I think it was 07. 07, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, downhill, uh, he went pretty quick the last couple of years. But uh, I think, like I said, Guantanamo Bay was the last time I saw him. And uh, I still cherish the uh, letters I have from him from back in, you know, the the early to mid nineties from the typewriter. And, yeah. like, you know, he carried, carried the briefcase around the big, you know, brown leather, hard briefcase. And, you know, every once in a while he, uh, you know, he would pull out his electric typewriter and, you know, so yeah, but, uh, he was a strong man and, uh, you know, um, he too liked to indulge in a beverage or two every once in a while. And, yeah. and the funny part was my first year, he always seemed to send me to go get him a bottle of black velvet whenever we were in a dry County. <laughs> oh yeah it was just yeah so deep in texas or south carolina like you know you pull into dry counties and you know like everywhere we go we would get invited to like you know a bar or restaurant for drinks and food afterward and stuff and eddie used to like you know so he'd come every once in a while but he would he would send me <laughs> Whenever it just happened to be like, you know, Mike, I need a bottle today. And I'm going, oh, my God, Eddie, we're like, you know, 20 miles from the freaking next <laughs> county. So, yeah. so it took me about a month and uh, I would buy five and I would stick them up on the top of the van. And, you know, yeah. about 15 minutes later, I come back with a bottle. But all I did was climb up the ladder and get it. That's yeah. smart. That is so smart. Yeah. You little oh, young yeah. Canadian. Not, not, yeah, it's not Gordy Howe smart, but it's smart. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Frank. Mike, this has been awesome, man. This, uh, like, this has been fantastic. 
thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I can't wait to uh, see you at a nationals. And yeah, I hope to hell it's this summer. Yeah, and we can uh, continue these conversations yeah, in the beer tent for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I appreciate it, guys, and thanks very much. And uh, on the side of uh, the promotion side of softball with Softball Canada, I, I really do uh, enjoy what you guys are doing for us and for the game. And it's always great to have. Uh, you know, uh, seeing our guys on there as well as other countries and, you know, the girl side, you name it, it's, uh, keep up the great work and, uh, and yes, I hope to see you guys, uh, you know, somewhere this summer. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. All Take right. care. We'll be chatting. Thanks, Mike. Okay. All right, boys. See ya. See ya, pal. Bye now. Bye now. That was awesome. Yeah. I feel like we still have a thousand questions to ask. <laughs> like, yeah, I still have like, uh, what happened in Texas? What happened in New yeah. Mexico? What yeah. happened in Arkansas? Yeah. Because I mean, they, they toured everywhere. Yeah, I know, man. It's so, crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. that was fantastic. Like the, the whole prison stories, you're like, yeah. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine crazy. being in his shoes? And Not to mention like, so he gets to do all of that. And then now he's also with Team Canada, so he gets to yeah. travel all over the goddamn world. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, Good for him. Yeah. Good guy. 100%. Yeah. Freaking yeah, right. Very excited. Yeah. Well, that was a... Well, was that a long one? Well, we're at 123 right now. I mean, yeah, my not... Wife, my wife thinks I'm downstairs, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> no peaches level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one other thing I forgot to tell you about the ball field. Oh, another one. We have... That was loud. The Beefy Wiener. <laughs> Adam Dorian. What? Yeah. So we have a guy that's going to be there during league nights selling hot dogs out of our canteen. So he's starting his own business. It's called the Beefy Wiener. Okay. I didn't know this day could get any better, but uh, it just did. Yeah, man. I'm fucking on fire right now. <laughs> so now he has to sell enough hot dogs that he be he can become a sponsor on Wait. here and we can use his name more. <laughs> the Beefy Wiener. The Beefy Wiener. Yeah. Let's not get too much further. Into that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, Frank, another week we get the... Uh, I was telling you before, we got some good guests coming on. Yeah, it's six weeks in a row. We got some oh, good stuff coming got, up here. Uh, next week, I got the. We're going to be talking to Samantha Shaw. Yes. From AU. Bat Big flip Bat. Champ. Oh, loves yeah. the Bat Flip. After that, uh, Stacey Porter, captain of uh, Australian national team. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Going to the Olympics. Good day, and, mate. Yeah. And we got uh, Cole Evans coming on. Yeah, that's sick. That's going to yeah, be, that's that's be a good one. I mean, yeah. guys. Young being the captain of... Uh, yeah, it's not even fair, really, is it? Yeah. Maybe we should just make him wait. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we say that in the how last many, one? That's <laughs> how, how much information can I get yeah. when I got this in his 20s? Yeah, you know I, I mean? don't know. Like, well, he's done a lot, so I'm sure right. we'll be okay yep. there. Then we got Timmy Mack. Timmy yeah, Mack Big Macker. That. That's good. Timmy McCumber. Yeah. We've played with him for a couple Forever. of years, played against him. Yeah. I'll still... You know what? I'm going to... We'll bring this up with him, but, you know, that's going to be in four weeks, five weeks. But I'm going to bring it up now. Remember when we restarted the Elks mm -hmm. in 07, we played our first game in Shuby and he Timmy pitched. showed oh, um, yes. that home run he hit. He hit it off of, uh, what's his face? Um, Steve and Steve. Yeah. What's his name? Steve Thomas. Steve Thomas. Steve Thomas. And yeah. it may have just landed right now. <laughs> but in reality, it landed in the oat field of the of second, the second field. field in Shuby. Yeah, it had to be about a 750 foot yes. shot. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And yeah. I can't wait to <laughs> to bring that up yeah. to you. But uh, yeah. anyway, to everybody, hope you have a great week. Until next weekend, week. And whatever weekend, day it is today, whatever, Friday. What's, what's yeah. today? Monday. Today's Friday, you dumbass. No, I mean when this release. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a great weekend. Let's get to classified. All right. Take care, Ren. See ya. I read the rules before I broke them I broke the chains before they choked me out uh. Now I pay close attention, yeah. really learned the code uh -uh. I learned to read the map before bounce, I hit bounce. the road you never heard this before yeah. But I'd rather lose a fight than miss the war And I ain't wishing competition or fishing for it I'm just living in a system, conditions are poor yeah. I've been lost in the rhythm and misinformed uh. Too many late nights hitting the liquor store yeah. Too many bad decisions, half-ass attempts No sweat, no fear, no blood, no tears I go hard, and I ain't making up no excuse I'm overdue, I don't do what I'm supposed to do Cause if you think about it, man, we're supposed to lose It ain't all picture-perfect ocean views No, I was a first-class rookie Taking out bullies in my all-black hoodie Man and mystery, you know the history, get it or forget it, cause poof, I'm out of here. I read the rules before I broke them, I broke them, uh -huh. I broke the chains before they choked me out, and I paid close attention, really learned the code, I learned to read the map before I hit the road. Who said? Nobody's gonna see me Yo, I 
been hot and I've been real low yeah. I've been beaten and broken but I healed though So many ups and downs, roughed up and clown We all got problems but we deal though I'm trying to do better now, find my inner peace Learn my art form and find my energy When my back's on the wall, I don't freeze up Now I find my inner strength and I real. Here we go, I know I've never been the smartest The wisest, but I realize what it takes Never dwell in the dark Cause the sun always rises, but gotta make it to the next day It's a feeling that you get in your lungs When you run, but you're running out of air And your breath won't come